What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We have some Guild of Guardians news, finally. We got a little gif, a little bit, showing off a little bit more combat here. You can see, like, this looks like a lot like uh, Lego Star Wars. I'm going to say that right off the bat. Any of you, if you guys ever played Lego Star Wars, uh, this dude looks like he's using a lightsaber right here. And, uh, yeah, it just gives me a lot of Lego Star Wars vibes. But I'm pretty sure the combat will be a lot more in-depth than uh, the Lego games. <laughs> But anyway, we, yeah, we see like uh, some single player stuff here and some multiplayer stuff here. So it looks pretty dope. Let's go ahead and look through this article real quick. I'm going to cover all the dungeon combat, starting with squad composition, which is hugely important in Guild of Guardians. The first thing to touch on is that guilds are separate from squads and squads are a group of heroes assembled for single player use. And guilds are multiple players grouped together to complete a specific task. The single player campaign is the main path of progression and you can earn rewards going through that and you can control a squad of heroes. Oh, so single player in single player you can actually control multiple heroes as well. And battle players will send four heroes at a time into a dungeon and optionally control one of those heroes at a time. So that sounds like they're going to have some auto combat, auto play, which um, I'm not the biggest fan of, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how that turns out. Uh, while single player is comp important, they have doubled down upon communications that they're leaning heavily into the amazing gameplay mechanics that can be facilitated by working with other players in these squads. In co-op raids, players can work together as a guild to take down a boss. Taking down the biggest bosses will reap the guild's the greatest loot, and guild raids require coordination in order to succeed. Faction, class, element, and power level will all be key to determining a raid's success or failure. So yeah, that's uh, one thing that um, they've been kind of talking about with this game is that there's this um, element aspect. So similar to Pokemon, you're, you're going to have like fire type of heroes and ice type and so on. Um, so that's kind of interesting that um, you're, you're supposed to be collecting all kinds of different heroes and combining them in different ways to complement each other, basically. And I think that's where this uh, strategy section comes into here in a moment. So each dungeon in the game will be balanced to provide challenge for the player. Monster affinities, abilities, passives will require the player to tune their teams to overcome each dungeon. For example, players can take a squad of all horde heroes. And that's another thing. There's like um, different, uh, I guess, factions. There's horde, there's empire and glade, I believe. So there's three different faction types of heroes. And I'm not sure how exactly those will play into part. I guess actually it says right here the certain creating squads of the same faction will give you an edge so you get like some sort of buff or and the class and elements also will give you some sort of buff if you combine them in certain ways. And they say like you're pretty much open to combine heroes however you want. You can combine like a squad just for mostly for defensive or you can go a full glass cannon. And there's, they say there's all sorts of different compositions and there's hidden buffs uh, depending on which characters you get. So you got to like you can just basically have to, you know, combine different characters and see what happens. So that sounds pretty fun. Combat. OK, so how does the above affect you as a player with mobile in hand? What actions do you have in your arsenal whilst in combat? Targeting. We're working in trick the intricacies of combat in Guild of Guardians, which makes you. <laughs> actually hit what you aim at so they're looking at a smart targeting system that will kind of like you know hopefully make you hit what you want to hit i guess um and they're saying they're pulling aspiration inspiration from games like diablo and hades and dragalia lost that's pretty cool that they're taken from hades because hades is a freaking amazing game and I, I really like this part we're not trying going to re reinvent the wheel here sturdy mechanically sound and reliable is our mo so i like that that they're you know they're going with what's you know industry has uh come up with over the years and they're just gonna you stick with what works you know that's i like it i can respect that active dodge they're gonna have an active dodge and not every hero can stand in front of the boss so they got an active dodge button and they're gonna have basic attacks and combos so like you're gonna have a light light attack and heavy attacks and then you can combo them in certain ways um and then ultimate attacks every hero has a pool of energy to draw from to perform their ultimate ability and that kind of sounds like uh, diablo immortal in a way like where you as you're using your basic attacks you probably build up an ultimate attack only thing that um that seems to be kind of missing here is like abilities like is it is this 
going to be more like Genshin Impact where um, you don't really have many more many abilities. You're just supposed to like kind of swap between characters and you know use your use your ultimates as their ultimates build up. Or yeah, not really sure. Does yeah, you know, they don't really mention any abilities other than other than the ultimate and then I guess the light and heavy basic attack, which is um yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll have to see how that actually works into the game. You know, I I always think you can't have a too many ability. Well, I guess you can't have too many abilities, but you know, I like to have a a lot of options, especially if you can customize like your characters in some sort of way and pick this and choose the skills that you want to use. But yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. This is this is all just I guess concept right now. And AI and boss actions. We want your team to follow you into dungeons and fight alongside you. The heroes you bring bring alongside will actively engage enemies, dodge attacks, dodge traps, and even use their ultimates. Okay. Oh, okay. So you, you get to control one hero, and then the other three heroes, I guess, have AI, and they will actually be... Okay, so I thought that... Yeah, I was thinking this was going to be like Genshin Impact, where you swap between heroes, but I guess the other ones uh, will be controlled by AI. Okay, interesting. Monster and boss actions. Enemies need to be smart. We hear this all the time in game development, but what actually makes an enemy smart? Using the environment, using their abilities, being aggressive. As usual, the answer is a little bit of everything. However, we believe it all boils down to one thing, playing to their strengths. We want our encounters to challenge the player, and we're working hard to make sure they're more than just filler you wade through to reach the end goal. Okay. Hero stats and why you may want to buy in the Guild of Guardians Founder Sale. In finishing, it's worth touching on one major point that is a caveat to all of the above. The better a hero's rarity, the better their base stats will be. This manifests in the form of more damage, health, and powerful, more powerful abilities. Okay, so now, now they're mentioning abilities. So, yeah. <laughs> We're not changing the game on that front. However, to make it abundantly clear, we do not want this game to be pay to win. Even legendary heroes will have their weaknesses. And you need to level up your heroes in the dungeon campaign to maximize their respective capabilities. Even lower, lower rarity heroes become powerful when they're equipped and leveled up. Most importantly, having a large roster of heroes to draw from to face any situation is important to progressing efficiently through the game. You can kill two boards with one stone by securing that large group in our founder's sale, setting you up for success and playing your own unique part in our early growth as a project. Okay, so yeah, they basically basically saying that um, your gear is probably going to matter more than your hero. So uh, even if you don't get like a legendary hero, if you're just using one of the base heroes, uh, and I believe they're going to have free heroes as well, um, you still have the opportunity to become more powerful than a legendary hero that has crappy equipment. So yeah, sounds pretty interesting here. Uh, again, this is an NFT game. If you guys are new to uh, you know blockchain NFT type stuff, uh, I would definitely go ahead and look into that. Basically, uh, long story short, is everything you get in this game, all the loot and the heroes are tradable and they have value in the Ethereum uh, ecosystem. So they're they're talking about their founder sale here, where they're going to actually be selling um, heroes for uh, who knows how much amount of money but actually you buy the heroes with real money and um basically that's an asset you don't even have to play the game you could just hold on to that hero and it may go up in value in the future and you could just sell it in the future um so it's a really really interesting concept and uh, i'm really interested to see more of this game hopefully um they have like a beta test or something coming up this year sometime uh they haven't really announced anything but they did announce release would, wouldn't be until 2022 at the earliest. Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, this sounds pretty interesting. And hit that like button if you like the video. We'll keep our eye on Guild of Guardians, and I'll keep you updated. Thanks for watching. Peace out, and see you next time. GG's.